coronavirus job retention scheme. Now most people have this question, how is this scheme going to help them? Now to answer all your questions, we invited a specialist and expert in the field. We got Sandeep Bhatia, who has been practicing law for the last 28 years, and he is an employment law expert. So Sandeep, let's get to the point. Welcome to this platform, and please tell us what is job retention scheme. Okay, well, what happened was obviously we are all living in lockdown uh, now, and a lot of the economy has closed down, and the government was panicking about what might happen and whether the economy might crash. So it had to take some emergency measures to try and ensure that once we're out of this lockdown, there is a part of the economy uh, left and people wouldn't lose their jobs hand over, over fist, um, as has happened in the uh, USA, for example. Uh, so what they did was they very quickly on the hoof announced this job uh, retention uh, scheme, which gives an incentive to employers to keep on their staff rather than making them uh, redundant during this uh, difficult time. Uh, and uh, they announced this on the 20th of March, uh, and it's done in a different way from uh, which uh, these schemes are normally carried out, because normally there's consultation uh, and the government thinks things through, and it takes many months or even years to implement such measures. But they were done very quickly as an emergency. And what's been happening is that the guidance has been playing catch up uh, ever since. Um, there's still a lot of unanswered questions, but there's some more questions. Now, there's been about three updates to the government guidance since it was announced on the 20th of March. Now, what time period this scheme uh, covers for? The period initially covers uh, the period from the 1st of March for a period of uh, three months. But uh, I imagine that if this lockdown period is uh, extended beyond three months, the government may well extend uh, the period of this scheme. Now, you come from a law background, so you know all the technical words. Like people like us who are common people who do not understand technical words. So what is this furlough? Furlough is not a legal word. It's just a word that the creators of the scheme thought up. And what it basically means is uh, putting uh, staff temporarily to one side without doing any work or providing services to uh, their employer. Um, so that's all that it means. It's not a specialist legal word. It could have been anything else. Thank you, Sandy, for explaining that. Now, I want to know how much an employee will be paid if they follow. 80% uh, Well, the employer will get uh, paid 80% uh, of the employee's wage together with certain pension and national insurance contributions covering that 80%. Uh, and they would then pay the uh, employee 80% of their usual wages. Hmm. Why 80%? Well, I, th I think ultimately the employee is taking uh, a 20% hit on their wages unless the employer wants to top up those wages. But that 20% top up, if the employer provides it, won't be provided by uh, HMRC or the government. Now, what happens if the employer cannot afford the rest 20%? then I think it's a matter of negotiation between employer and employee. This isn't something which cannot, can just be foisted upon an employee. There needs to be an agreement. It needs to be evidenced in writing from the employer to uh, the employee. And from a, 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 an employment law perspective, any employer that attempts to just force their employees to go through this is, is being slightly foolish um, because employment law applies and if you force people then the normal uh, law regarding discrimination uh, and all other employment law aspects still apply so if you try and force someone you may find yourself in a year or two in front of an employment tribunal so the, the first thing I would say is that if employers want to consider using this scheme they should talk to their employees and explain why they need uh, to do this you know, if, if you explain to employees that it's either this or I'm going to have to make all of you redundant, quite a few employees would probably say, okay, it, this is better than being made redundant. So it means there has to be a mutual agreement between the employer and the employee. Now, what happens if there's no mutual agreement between them? What happens next? If uh, an employee has been selected for furlough and the employee is not happy 
about that. They, uh, or if they're made redundant and they're not happy, they should raise a grievance, a formal written uh, complaint. Now, uh, most uh, good organizations have their own grievance uh, procedure. But if um, a, a, an employer doesn't have a grievance procedure, the place to look is the ACAS, A-C-A-S, Arbitration and Conciliation Service website, because they have guidance on what a good grievance procedure should look like and how to take steps to file um, a grievance. And if the matter goes to the Employment Tribunal, the Employment Tribunal would look at how closely the employer has followed the ACAS guidance in dealing with that grievance or complaint made by the employee. Yes, yeah, Sandeep, you brought a very important point. I think we need further discussion on it. And I think we should keep it separate for another video where people can go into it and get more in-depth information. So we'll uh, cover grievances and discipline procedures on another video. For now, I want to know this uh, job retention scheme, what it cannot cover or what it doesn't cover. Uh, the self-employed, uh, those who are on uh, maternity uh, leave or uh, parental leave, shared parental leave, or things like that, they'd get paid in the normal way um, with respect to that leave. But if the employer is making voluntary contributions on top, then 80% of those voluntary contributions uh, should be covered. Um, if uh, someone is on unpaid leave um, before the 28th of, of February uh, 2020, then they probably uh, would not be covered either. And these provisions do not apply to the self employed. Can an employee work or what kind of work they can do if they're furloughed? Uh, they're not allowed to do uh, any uh, work for their employer or provide services to their employer or for a sister organization, for example, if the employer uh, is a member of a group of companies. But they are allowed to do uh, volunteering work. And uh, what recent guidance has said is they are allowed to take another job provided that their contract of employment allows for that. Um, some contracts of employment are very restrictive and those terms would need to be uh, respected. But if there isn't any provision, then an employee can take on another job while still being paid to be on furlough. So someone now just started going to a job a month, two months or three months a year old. Now what happens to them? The scheme doesn't say anything about the length of time that you've been um, in, in, in service. The, the provision is that you must be on paid pay as, you, pay as you earn, on the employee's pay as you earn scheme, and you must be on their payroll on the 28th of February uh, 2020. So if you started work on the 1st of March or after that, you wouldn't be covered by this scheme. Now, by the way, can an employer claim for someone who's not an employee? Uh, yes, there are provisions regarding uh, company uh, directors, uh, office holders, apprentices are covered, I should have said. Uh, so th there are own individual rules regarding uh, those particular people. If somebody's a company director, they're being paid uh, pay as you earn, then there are provisions whereby they could be made subject to the uh, job retention scheme. Now, Sunday, probably this is my last question. What happens to somebody who's already on maternity leave or paternity leave? or shared parental leave? Uh, uh, basically, they, they continue to be on uh, maternity leave or, or shared parental leave, or, and, and they would be paid in the normal way that they would be, even if it was before this uh, scheme, for that period of, of time. But what I was trying to say earlier was that if, in some cases, an employer pays extra above and beyond the pay that they would be getting under those schemes and they might be able to get 80% of what they pay under those schemes uh, back um, from the government. And, and, and you know, so uh, that, is, that is the provision. Thank you, Sandeep, for sharing such wonderful information regarding the job retention scheme. It's been a pleasure having you on this platform. My name is Gunjan Hazarika. What I'm trying to achieve is answer the questions that people have right now. During these difficult times, I'm going to go and speak to all the experts and bring the answers to you. All you have to do is ask those questions to me. If you want to discuss any topic, just let me know. You can email me or write on this platform itself. We will be on Facebook page. We will be also on YouTube. 
So I'm going to do a lot of videos from this point covering properties to immigration to all kind of topics that we can bring where it says what is your right to know. It's your right in the end. It's your right to know. You have a question, so my job will be to go and find that expert and bring him and give and share those information with you. Thank you for logging in. All you have to do is share this video with anyone you want, your friends, your family. Let them know this platform exists where their questions can be answered. So let's together build this platform for a better and for a brighter future for every single person. Thank you for listening.